إحسان أن تعبد الله كأنك ترى فإن لم تكن تراه فإنه يراك أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام. In our religion, one of the biggest misunderstandings is that Islam is all about what to do. What prayer should we pray? What days should we fast? What du'as should we make? You know, what amount of money should we give for sadaqah? But rather, Islam plays just as big of a role in the question of how. How well should one observe their salah? How well should one behave when they're fasting during the day of Ramadan? What should the mentality and how should the quality be of a person who is giving sadaqah? How well can we worship Allah? Is a question that goes very, very seldom asked in our religion. And a lot of us are, you know, seeking that spiritual moment. Yeah, I want to pray and I want to hit that spiritual realization. When I fast, I want to build that connection with Allah. But the real question we as believers need to ask ourselves is how well and what is the quality of our worship that we engage in? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran very beautifully, He says, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِصَبْرِ salati." He says, seek help, وَاسْتَعِينُوا It's a word that, or a phrase that you can actually find in Surah Al-Fatiha. إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُوا وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينُ Allah commands us, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ Seek help through patience and through prayer. وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ But he says, this is difficult. This is difficult for people, إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ Except for those of you who are described as خَاشِعِينَ As people who have خُشُوع People who have concentration people who have that mentality of that quality of worship. So in our religion, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says even that you can pray, you can make dua, you can give sadaqah, but the moment that you'll feel that connection with Allah is the moment that you really get in that mentality of quality. When I step up on a prayer rug, am I just doing it to get it over with? Or am I doing it because I sincerely want to create a relationship with God? It's a huge question to ask ourselves as believers. And one of the concepts in our religion that this entire principle is covered in is the concept of Ihsan. The concept of Ihsan, which roughly translates out to as excellence, beauty. And in one of the most major narrations from the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is a hadith that's known as Hadith Jibreel. And a companion by the name of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, he narrates this beautiful tradition from the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, where he says that we were sitting in the company of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam when a man walked in. That this was a man who walked in and he was dressed in completely white. He was very clean looking. And his hair was very dark. His hair was very black. And he says, La yura alayhi atharu safari. That we didn't notice any sort, any sort of evidence of travel on this man. And I digress here. You know, we're talking about quality and ihsan. Look at the description of Umar ibn Khattab about this man. This man came into the presence of the Prophet Sallallahu and he looked beautiful. He didn't just look, you know, tattered and, 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 and disheveled and, you know, his clothes were torn apart. He looked very good. He looked very good. He was dressed very well. When you come into the presence of the Prophet Sallallahu and you want to talk to the Prophet Sallallahu you look the part. This is Ihsan. And Umar says, he came and he sat with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, you know, فَأَسَدَنَا رُكْبَتَيْهِ إِلَىٰ رُكْبَتَيْهِ He sat with his knee upon the knee of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He sat very respectfully. And he put his hands on the thighs of the Blessed Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
And he says, Muhammad, akhbirni anil Islam. Oh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell me about Islam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he goes on to answer this man and he says, Al Islam, Islam is based upon the five pillars. Islam is an tashhad Allah ilaha illallah. It is testifying that there is only one God worthy of worship. Wa shadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. And that I am his final messenger. And that you should pray five times a day. That you should give zakat. That you should fast in Ramadan. And you should perform the hajj if you're able to. And then this man, he says, qala sadaqt. He says, you're right. And Umar ibn Khattab was astounded. Absolutely astounded. He actually says in the narration, he says, fa'ajibna lahu. He says, we were, we were shocked. We were, we, were, we were kind of perplexed. lahu. He said, we were confused. Yas'aluhu wa yusaddiquhu. We were shocked that the one who was asking was then confirming the truth of the answer. This has never happened before. Usually when you ask somebody a question, they give you the answer and you say, oh really, okay, I'm learning. This man says, Sadat, you're right. So he knew the answer to this question. And so then he continues to ask the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, فَأَخْبِرْنِي عَنِّ الْإِيمَانِ He says, tell me about Iman. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, أَن تُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرُسُلِي وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَتُؤْمِنَ بِالْقَدَرِ خَيْرِهِ وَشَرِّهِ He says, belief, Iman is believing in God, believing in the angels, Believing in the books, believing in the messengers, belief on the final of the final day, and believing in qadr, in destiny, both in what you deem is good and what you deem is bad. And that this person says, Sadaqt, says, You're right. And then finally, this man, he asked the Prophet, he says, He says, Fa'akhbirni anil ihsan. He says, Tell me about Ihsan. And this is where I want everyone to take something home today. The Prophet Sallallahu he defines Ihsan. He says, Al-Ihsan, an ta'abudullaha ka'annaka tarahu. He says that Ihsan is worshiping God as though you can see Him. Worshiping Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala as though you can see Him. And I want everyone to imagine right now, what would your acts of worship be like if you could literally see Allah in front of you right now? Imagine what your prayers would be like if you saw Allah in front of you right now. This is what the scholars, they describe as mushahada. Mushahada, which means personal witnessing. Performing your acts of worship as though you can literally see God in front of you. There's a very beautiful narration in Bukhari where it says Allah has some angels who look for those who celebrate the praises of Allah on the roads and the paths. That some angels are literally, they are literally dedicated for people who are remembering Allah randomly in the middle of the earth anywhere. And when they find people doing dhikr of Allah, they stop and they tell all the other angels, come listen, come listen. This person is singing the praises of God. He's remembering Allah. And so Allah will tell these angels, oh angels, oh angels, what do my servants do? And the angels, they respond to Allah and they say, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are remembering you with their tongues. They're saying, Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask them, do they see me? Do they see me? And the angels, they say, Ya Allah, they cannot see you. And Allah asked the angels, how would it have been if they saw me? Subhanallah. And the angels, they respond, Ya Allah, if they saw you, they would worship you even more devoutly. They would, they would glorify you more beautifully they would testify to your oneness even more beautifully, Ya Allah. This is mushahada. That when you worship God, it's literally like He's in front of you. I mean, imagine this in your life right now. We have people of all ages here. 
When you drive down a highway, what would your driving be like if you saw police officers spaced out on every single exit? Hands would be at 10 and 2. Phone, what phone? I don't even have a phone. <laughs> right? I'm going to stop exactly where I'm I'm going to stop 75 feet before the stoplight, just as they taught me when I took my driving exam. Imagine a school. Look at you as a student. What do students behave like when their teachers are walking around the classroom as they take an exam? Everyone eyes on their own paper. Not one eye will dart across the room because they know that the teacher's in front of them. That mentality is mushahada. When I pray to Allah, I pray as though Allah is in front of me. When I fast in Ramadan, I fast as though Allah is in front of me. When I give sadaqah, I give sadaqah as though Allah is right there with me. And this is an example that the Prophet ﷺ perfected in his life. When he was on his journey to Medina with Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu an, and they were in this mountain called Jabal al Thawr, and Abu Bakr was terrified that the Quraysh would find them in this cave. And he looks at Abu Bakr and he says, Ya Abu Bakr, what would you say? If these two people, if the company of these two people, the third of which was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, Ya Abi Bakr, la tahzan, inna Allah ma'ana. Abu Bakr, don't be afraid. Inna Allah ma'ana, Allah is with us. Allah is here with us. That's the first step of Ihsan. And ta'abudullaha ka'anna ka tara, as though you can see him. Fa in lam takun tarahu, fa inna hu yarak. The second level of ihsan is although you cannot see Allah, know فَإِنَّهُ yarak. Know that Allah can see you. This is the second level of ihsan. And the scholars, they call this level of ihsan muraqaba. The idea of knowing that Allah is watching you even though you cannot see Him. So even though you may not see the police officers yourself, what do you know? They're there. <laughs> Especially if you pass through George Bush Turnpike. They're there somewhere. Even if your teacher steps out of the room, you know that the cameras are there. Even if you know that your boss is not right in front of you watching you work, you know that there's a sense of accountability. This is what's called muraqaba. And one of the most beautiful examples of this was from the life of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. Umar ibn al-Khattab one time, he went on a journey. He was traveling. And Umar ibn al-Khattab was a companion of the Prophet ﷺ that really loved to test people in terms of their, their faith. He wanted to see what level of faith you had. Let's see what you're made of. You call yourself a Muslim, let's see. And so he was on this journey and he comes by a young boy, a young man, who was in charge of this flock of sheep. He was in charge of this flock of sheep. And Umar ibn al-Khattab, he goes up to this young man and he says, Ya Ghulam, hey you. I want one of those sheep right there. And this young man, he looks at Umar ibn Khattab, he says, look, like, I, I don't, I'm not, an, I don't, I'm not, you know, I'm not the owner of these animals. I can't sell them to you. I can't even sell you one. I don't own them. It's not my right. And Umar ibn Khattab, he goes, why don't you just tell your master that, you know, a wolf just ate one of them. No, no harm, no foul, right? You get the money. Your master thinks that a, she, that, that a wolf just ate one of his animals, so no, no, no harm done. Everyone's cool. And you know what this young man, he told Umar ibn Khattab at that moment? He goes, Fa'in Allah. He goes, what about God? What about God? I can fool my master. I can fool a random person on the street. I can even fool myself to a certain extent. Fa'in Allah, ya Umar. What about God? You can't fool Allah. And at that moment, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, he stopped in his tracks and began to weep. And the narration says that he, when he went back to Medina al Munawwara, he sent a letter to the master of this slave. And he paid him whatever it was to free this young boy. And the boy, he came to Medina to meet Umar ibn al-Khattab and he says, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, why, why did you free me? What, what, what happened? What did I do that gained this love from you? And Umar ibn Khattab, he said, those words that you spoke, what about Allah? Those words, they freed you in this life and may they free you in the hereafter. Allahu Akbar. This is Ihsan. 
Your awareness of God is so great that whatever you do, you know that you're not alone. You know that you're not alone. And SubhanAllah, think about the way that we treat people. Think about the way that we treat people. We walk into a person's house and we're rude to them. Imagine if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was there and He witnessed you. He witnessed you being rude to somebody in their own home. Would you ever be invited back to that home ever again? This is what Ihsan really is. Is that awareness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is constantly around you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be the best of muhsins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be the people who really, really hold high this principle of ihsan and really understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is constantly around us. Amin Rabbil Alameen. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik wa nashadu an la ilaha illa ant nastaghfiruka wa natuburik. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, as salatu wa salam ala Rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Just to finish this short reminder today, I wanted to leave everybody with a couple of tangible tips that we can take home with us to improve our level of ihsan. Number one, number one is to beautify our private deeds more than our public deeds. Beautify our private deeds more than our public deeds. As human beings, people who are constantly in the eye of other people, how well can you do certain deeds in private? When we're at Jum'ah prayer at Valley Ranch Islamic Center, you know, our Jum'ah may be beautiful because we're surrounded by hundreds of our brothers and sisters worshiping Allah together in congregation. But what about that Dhuhr Salah that you prayed at the office? What about that Maghrib Salah that we prayed in our room? Do we have that same level of beauty with those private deeds? as we do when we're in public eyes, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He warns us about this. He says, you know, He, he, he says, فَوَيْلُ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ Woe to those who pray. أَلَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ Those who pray but are heedless of their prayers. أَلَّذِينَ هُمْ يُرَاؤُونَ Those who do it because of the eye of other people. May Allah protect us and make our private deeds even more beautiful than our public deeds. That's number one. Number two is do things consistently. Do things consistently. When it comes to building a relationship with our faith, it's not a one-hit wonder. A lot of us think like, you know, if I give that big donation, you know, if I just go one day to Jum'ah, or if I do the best Ramadan ever, then I'll be good. You know what's not there? The rest of the 11 months out of the year, where Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha are still there. Consistency is the key when it comes to building this level of excellence in your deeds. That you know that no longer is prayer a burden upon you, but rather prayer is the coolness of your eyes. That worship around the clock is the coolness of your eyes. You no, you no longer are dreading praying at night. You're looking forward to it because that's the way that you end your day now. SubhanAllah, may Allah allow us to reach that level of consistency. And the last thing, the last tip is ask Allah to purify your intentions. Ask Allah to purify your intentions because intentions are something that are constantly changing. And in Arabic, we believe in this word called iqrar. Iqrar means ongoing. Intentions are ongoing. It's something that needs to be consistently improved because intention can start somewhere in the beginning and be lost halfway through. And this is why intentions are so important to refine every single hour of the day. Why am I doing this? Let's clarify the beauty behind my deeds. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify our intentions for us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be the best of people when it comes to this religion. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to worship Him in the highest of quality. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for any of our mistakes and shortcomings. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to consistently forgive us and constantly forgive us for all of our mistakes and shortcomings. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our loved ones and our families. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to consistently and constantly have 
love around us and give us his love and his rahmah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be the best of believers, the best of muhsins, and the best of Muslims. Ameen Rabbil Alameen. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adhaban nar. Allahumma inna ka'afuan kareemun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anna. Allahumma inna ka'afuan kareemun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anna. Allahumma inna ka'afuan kareemun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anna. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim fi al-alameen. Inna ka hamidu majid. Ibad Allah. Inna Allah ya'muru bil'adi wal ihsani wa ayta adil qurba. Wa yanha anil fahshai wal munkari wal baghi. Ya'idhukum la'allakum tadakkaroon. Aqim as-salaam.